This program was produced through facilities provided by Oceanic Cable, Community Programming, Honolulu. laughing and smiling again I want him to grow up healthy I want him to have a normal life he'll have to go to a new school and he's gonna have to make new friends but at least he's safe now and I don't have to worry now okay boy come on mom. no I am busy you come go on, mom. you go okay go <sighs> well I really do feel a lot better uh, I feel much more relaxed I plan to do new things in life you know do things I wasn't allowed to do you know things he didn't allow me to anyway I I'm still young Auntie, what you doing? Wait, I help you. Well, the thing is, it's not over. You know, I, I still got to file for divorce, and you know that's gonna be hard. And I can't get any. I juice. Okay. You know, I can't get any financial uh, financial assistance because. I'm still married to him. Mm -hmm. oh, so you make sure you drink all then, huh? How about you? You want some? Okay. And, um, you know, I got to find a new place to live and find a new job. And, you know, that's going to be hard because, well, I know he's still looking for me. So um, I'm getting one of those, what do you call them? Restraining orders, protective orders. Yeah, that means, um, you know, the police can arrest him if he tries to make contact with me and make trouble. So, you know, I still got these things to think about, but I can't tell you how much better it makes me feel. When did you know that he was going to become violent? whenever he was drunk. I mean, he didn't hit me every time he was drunk, but, you know, 
when he would start to pick on me for little things, you know, when I couldn't do anything right, I knew it was coming. When he yelled at me, and every time he yelled at me, I, I couldn't answer, you know, I, I was so afraid that I just couldn't answer him, and, and then there was always that silence. Then he would hit me. When I wanted to scream and yell sometimes, I couldn't. You know, the neighbors would hear us. My whole life was surrounded by that silence, you know, hiding my shame and guilt from others. I had to tell someone. Now that you're out of there, what do you think his problem is? I don't know what his problem was. I think it has to do with his attitude. You know, he has that kind of bossy attitude. You know, it, it wasn't like I was his wife anymore. It was more like I was his personal property. You know, sex was my duty. And he'd expect it every time whenever he felt like it. And that was usually every night. And I think it has to do with his friends. You know, every time after work, you know, they go out drinking, come home late. And you know, they were beating their wives too. You know, he'd even tell me those kind of stories. Him and his friends, they're all locked up into that macho trip. You know, the I'm the king kind of attitude. When my daddy came home from work, he was really drunk. He was really drunk. And, and he started arguing and fighting with my mother. And I was afraid that I just wanted to call the police. So financially, were you guys OK? I mean, was money part of the problem? Um, no, um, money was not the problem. You know, we weren't poor or anything like that. You know, he had a steady job with the state, and so we were okay financially. In fact, he was very proud of himself, you know, that he could provide us with things and take care of us. But I think the problem was he just expected too much in return. I never thought this would happen. I never thought he'd be the type to hit me. Whenever he did, he'd cry and say he was sorry, promise to change, and I always believed him. I wanted our marriage to really work. But I stopped loving this guy a long time ago. The last time, he knocked me out unconscious. I never was hit so hard that I was knocked unconscious. I can't remember what happened at first, but when I opened my eyes, I felt dizzy. And my stomach felt kind of sick. Then I saw my boy's face. You know, I saw the fear in his eyes too many times before. I thought for the sake of my son, I really needed help. She had bruises on her eyes, and she had a black eye, and she had bruises on her legs, too. And what else? And, and, she, 
and she had a big bump on her back. Why, uh, why didn't you call your family? Why didn't you get help from them? My family didn't know anything. I hid it from them because, you know, I didn't want anything to happen. You know, my husband has a gun somewhere in the house and, you know, it would have just meant more violence. You know, something could have happened. Besides, my brothers have guns too. I was confused. I was ashamed. But, you know, you know, because I stayed home all the time, I watched TV a lot, you know, like Donahue and stuff. And I saw these programs about spouse abuse and children. So I knew there was help and that there were others like me. But I, I couldn't bring myself to call for help. You know, I was ashamed of myself. And I couldn't admit to anyone that I had these problems. Well, I started noticing how it was affecting him. Um, he couldn't smile and, you know, every time I held him, he just seemed to be at a distance. You know, he was afraid of everything. Then I started getting calls from his teacher and she said that he would start crying in class for no reason and, and that she'd like to help if she could. And I told her, I lied, I, I told her that he was probably ill that day, that, God, you know, I felt so selfish. I, I felt like a lousy mother, a, a sick person. I mean, how could I help my son when I couldn't even help myself? You know, there was just so much violence in his life. I called my girlfriend. We were friends since high school. <laughs> I don't want to say who she is, but she's the one that helped me through. And the thing is, she didn't have to get involved. She was really desperate. I mean, she really needed help. What am I going to do, say no? I guess a lot of people feel that way, though. And I can understand why people don't want to get involved. But I would have felt horrible if something awful had happened to her and I had made no attempt to help her. You know? I mostly listened. Um, she really needed somebody to talk to. And I just tried to comfort her and just tried to be a good friend. She needed to open up and share her problem with somebody that really cared. What, what did you do for her? Did you? Uh... I just made some phone calls for her and got her from some information from certain agencies and because she was too embarrassed to, to call them for herself. But I didn't mind calling. I mean, I felt someone had to do it. And, uh, but the main thing that I told her was that if she needed help at any time or she needed somebody to take her to someplace safe, or something that she should call me right away when she was ready and I would be there. I felt so much better, you know, just talking to her. She gave me confidence, courage. She was the one that made me realize that if I were to get away from my husband, you know, I'd have to find a place that he didn't know about. At first, I couldn't think of any place. It seemed like after I got married, I just lost track of my friends, you know, either they went to the mainland or joined the service. And then I remembered my auntie. You know, she's not really my auntie, but uh, she and my mom are good friends. They used to work at the cannery together a long time ago. So I called her. Okay, okay that's it. Gee, you mind talking to us? No, no, I not talk. Uh, no, no, I shame. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. She used to babysit me a long time ago when I was small. 
and um, I hadn't seen her like in 15 years, yeah, auntie? Uh, yeah, 15 years, about that. <laughs> yeah, so I knew he never met her. And um, I knew that this place would be safe because <laughs> I couldn't even find this place. So I knew he didn't either. I knew it was coming. I was afraid. I knew if I didn't leave, I wouldn't be able to survive the weekend. So that fri Friday, I got up and thought to myself, this is it. I'm getting out of here. I made breakfast for him. And we didn't talk at all. And there was that silence again. I thought he was going to hit me. He didn't, though. He just finished his breakfast and had another beer and went to work. That was the last time I saw him. And that was about three weeks ago. My child is safe and that's all I care about right now. You know, when you're in a situation like that, you try to solve your problems in that state of mind. And you can't. You know, it's, it's impossible because like when the situation really gets dangerous, you just don't have the time to, you know, sort things out. You gotta get out and get help. I really don't know. He probably went insane or something. You know, scream his head off, throw things around the house, punch the walls. I don't know how he felt. And you know, I don't really care. I mean, he's out of my life and I just don't care anymore. What do you think he's going to say about all this, about you uh, talking about this? Well, he'll probably get really angry when he finds out that I'm talking about him. Um, he'll go and tell all his friends that I was good for nothing and that I deserved it. You know, nobody deserves what he did to me. How do you feel about your husband now and about him? Sometimes I feel for him, but I think it's more pity, you know, not love. I'm afraid of being alone, but I want the kind of love without the fear and violence, you know, for me and my child. It's definitely affected my attitude towards men. I mean, I won't be able to relax around men for, for a while. No, I'm, I'm, I don't love him. I'm afraid of him. I don't like him. Before, I used to put my son in the car and just drive and I used to think a lot about leaving my husband and it seemed like my son could sense this because he'd start crying for his dad and, and I always felt so selfish, you know, how could I just break away, take my son and just leave? Now he just doesn't want another father. Mommy, we can eat. I'm starving from pig. I don't mind helping her because I know God will bless me and will give me many more years. <laughs> I'm lucky because when I finally decided to get help, I found friends. You know, I found people who cared. I really do feel a lot better in fact, I can't even believe I'm talking about it. You know, I finally broke the silence and got help. My child is safe.
this program is a dramatic presentation based on actual case histories of family violence in Hawaii. Thousands of people in Hawaii are assaulted by their own family members or loved ones. The exact number is unknown. Many are unaccounted for by police, social workers, or others who become aware of the violence. Most of the abuse goes unreported. Family violence occurs among all social, ethnic, and economic groups. If you are a victim or would like more information on Oahu, call the Shelter for Abused Spouses, 841-0822. Victim Witness Kokua Services, 523-4158, or Child Protective Services, 947-8650. On Kauai, call 822-1748. On Maui, call 579-9581. On Molokai, call 567-6420. On Hawaii, call 959-5825.